praise, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace. To love you from the inside out, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out, Lord, my soul cries out everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. And the cry of my heart is to bring you praise from the inside out. Lord, my soul cries out from the inside out. Lord, my soul cries out. What love could remember the wrongs we have done? On missions, although we need counts, not their sum.
I've got all the buttons pushed right. Well, good morning. Good to see everybody here today. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate those that are watching us on Facebook Live. Thank you so much today. We do really appreciate those that are trying to help us this morning. We're, we're trying to be as safe as we possibly can be, and I appreciate you so much sitting on a row with a bow that allows us to be the proper distance apart, and, and I really, really do appreciate that. I appreciate you listening to, um, to us on Facebook and also um, reading our emails to know the changes that we've made for today, and hopefully when December 30th comes, uh, we can, uh, we'll find that this COVID's in, in a better situation with us and we can make some other changes. This Wednesday night, we will not have evening services this Wednesday, but we are providing um, for you, and you, you should have it this morning in the Pathfinder, devotionals for families and for children. These were written by Stephen and by Eli, and we appreciate that so much and what they did to help us with that. Also on the front of the Pathfinder, uh, we helped our brother Dale Byron in his missionary efforts, and he made a plea for us to help with some typhoon relief funds. The Filipino people and the churches there are struggling due to the massive typhoon that they had, and so they have requested some help. The church here is going to send them $2,000, and we wanted to give you the opportunity, if you wanted to make a donation for this, a, a box is outside in the foyer. If you'd like to help with this, just make your checks payable to Dale Byron Missions and write Typhoon Relief on your check. And you can put that out there. We'd like to collect this by next Sunday so that we can hurry up and get that uh, funds to them. And then this afternoon, uh, we're going to be helping 24 families with Thanksgiving boxes. They're already prepared. We're going to do a drive-by. These folks have been contacted, and they're going to come and pick their boxes up this afternoon. If you'd like to help with that, it will be from 1.30 until 3.30. We look forward to our worship service today. Thank you again for coming. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for inviting us into your home. It's good to be with everyone here today. And now let's begin with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing our lives, and we thank you, Father, we can come and worship. We thank you for being an awesome God and for hearing our prayers. We ask a very special blessing on our congregation. We pray, Father, that we might encourage each other today with uh, the theme of thanksgiving that we're witnessing this week. Help us to be a grateful people and a thankful people. Father, bless this service today. In the name of Christ, amen.
Heavenly Father, we are a blessed people. Father, in this morning, we have so many things to be thankful for. Father, this morning, I'm thankful for your kindness. Father, that you revealed your kindness because you saved us. Not for anything that we had done, but through your mercy. Father, I'm thankful for your kindness this morning. I'm thankful for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross, who had his body broken for our sins. And it was because of your mercy that you were able to save us. Father, we take the bread this morning in remembrance of that body that was broken on the cross so that we may have hope for a home with you one day. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we take of the fruit of the vine this morning to remind us of the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins, the same blood that cleanses us through baptism today. Father, we're thankful for this gift. We're thankful for your plan of salvation. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll say a prayer for our offering. Heavenly Father, we are a blessed people. Father, and we know that you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you, Father. And I pray that as we take up an offering this week, that we may use it to seek you further, Father. To seek you further in this community and to spread your light here and around the world, Father, as we support those uh, in positions across the globe. Father, a, a special thanks and a a special blessing I ask upon um, the Thanksgiving boxes that we're giving this week, uh, today, actually. The Thanksgiving boxes, boxes that were given to families today in our community, I, I pray that that's a special blessing on their families, Father. And I pray that as we give this week that we are mindful of the things that the church is doing, the church, the things that we're capable, pay, capable of, and that we continue to give with the giver's heart. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading will come to us from Psalm 117, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his command. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed.
Today we're going to spend our morning worship service on the attitude of gratitude. We're going to be a thankful people. And as you know, our community, our state, our nation, and our church, everybody is centered around Thanksgiving this week. Um, it's just good that we can come today and talk about being thankful. And this morning, Frank Cardwell, Brian Gibson, Eli Hurt, and Stephen Kirby will address their thoughts on being thankful and grateful. We appreciate them and their thoughts that they've prepared. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So I am thankful this morning that God has given us the gift of time. 
Now, you might have to hold back an eye roll at me on that <laughs> because <laughs> I realize here lately that we might have all the time we need and, and too much time. And you're going, well, what are you, what are you talking about? But I, I think there are times when we've, we've just got too much time of that said gift. But I think of all the possibilities that we can show others just how grateful and how thankful we are with the amount of time that we've been given. Just think how we can use that time wisely. We can call family. We can call friends. We can call people that we don't regularly connect with and, and talk to them. We can call those that are experiencing cabin fever. You know, if you know folks that are really struggling, you know, call them on the phone. And just tell them how grateful that, that you are and how thankful we are. We can call those that have been affected by the physical, mental, and spiritual health because of this pandemic. And you know, you don't have to look too far. We can likely name someone in our immediate circle who's contacted their family. If we had prayer this morning in our Sunday school class with one of my classmates in Auburn, I mean, we don't have to go very far to find some folks that have been affected by this. And, you know, we can, we can call them, tell them we're praying for them. We can send texts and say, I'm, I'm thinking of you. So I'm just grateful that God's given us this time, this, this free time, this ample time. And just, just try to think about how grateful and how thankful these folks would be to receive correspondence from you. I'm also thankful that God's given us ample opportunity to love our neighbors with the time that we have I mean it's it's just it, it's just great to do this you know when you think about people that are hoarding toilet paper and you think about the inflated prices of baby formula and the apathy that's out there concerning the environment that we're in we can do completely the opposite we can be a grateful people we can be a thankful people this afternoon, we're going to help 24 families in our communities, and we're, we're holding a drive-by, and these people have been contacted, and they're going to come and pick up some food. And, and I'm just so thankful for the grateful hearts of people that made this possible, that made donations to where that we could go and, and buy the food for them. Um, Harristown yesterday helped 95 people in our community, and it had had 25 more that they could have helped. They just simply ran out of commodities for them. So what a, what a wonderful work and what a grateful time and, and what a thankful time. You know, God doesn't always answer our prayers how we expect. And he often moves behind the scenes, especially during this pandemic. But we can see the ways that he shows love for us, even in the minor things we do. Just for instance, a bagging of groceries or prayer call from a friend it's so easy to let thoughts about everything going wrong drown out drown out the many things that are good and it only takes a moment when we pause and to reflect to be thankful however small it may seem and God doesn't intend for us to live separate lives from our feelings but to bring our feelings to him the good, the bad, the ugly. That's what he wants. I want to share with you this morning some scripture that I think will help us be a, a grateful people and a thankful people. The first is from Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirits, of joint and of, of marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but are all naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and find grace to help 
in time of need. Psalm 33. For the word of the Lord is faithful and true. He is faithful in all that he does. 1 John 1, verse 5. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. John 11, verse 25. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are his everlasting arms. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Psalm 25. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Romans 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, a simple pause to thank God for one thing in the midst of challenges can change our outlook from discouraged to hopeful. So let's just be thankful. Let's be grateful. Pray with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessings in my life. I confess that I haven't stopped to give you thanks for the many things you've blessed me. Instead, I've let problems take over my attention. Forgive me, Lord. You deserve all the gratitude I can give. You deserve so much more. And each day seems to bring more problems, and the more I focus on them, the more discouraged I become. But your word, your scripture, teaches me the value of gratitude. And I recall, dear Father, the words from the psalmist that said, the one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To the one who orders his way rightly, I will show salvation of God. So help me to remember this amazing promise and make gratitude a priority in my life. Help me, Father, to start each day by giving thanks to you for life's blessings. And help me to renew my attitude toward any problem that will happen. And help us to realize, Father, that gratitude is a powerful weapon against discouragement and hopelessness. Strengthen me. Strengthen me, Lord, to resist distractions. Help me, Lord, to focus fully on your goodness. And help me, Lord, to thank you for the greatest gift of all, your Son. In his name we pray. Probably <clears throat> it would take us a good while if we all decided to make us a list of everything that we're thankful for. And a lot of times when, uh, if you talk to somebody for a very long period of time, uh, you'll find out what is valuable in their life and what they consider to be valuable and hopefully uh, part of that would be serving God. Every day, uh, 
I think it's awfully important to have a great prayer life that we talk to God constantly. And in my prayers to God each day, I can assure you that one of the things that I thank God for is my children and their families. And I pray for them more than one time a day. I'm thankful for my wife who puts up with me, and some of you know what that means. But I do, uh, I'm thankful for her, and I'm thankful for our health. But you know, and through life, uh, and it's hard for me uh, being involved with sports and games and uh, things all my life to compare, but you know, when I start thinking about my time as a coach, and I, uh, it's amazing, but sometimes I think about I think first about the games that I lost more than I do about the games that I won. And I think sometimes in life it's the same way. Uh, you know, I can't help but when I'm thinking about things to think about the mistakes I've made. And I know, Juan Lane, you think I'm perfect. I understand that, but uh, I, I really am not and was not. And But sometimes... I make mistakes and, and I uh, have done and said things that I should not have and that I regret. And I think about those things first. Now I'm certain that certainly down through life sometimes I have done some things that, that God would say, okay, that's a good deal. You did, you did fine there. But I also remember those other times. Being 80 years old, I have some battle scars going through life. But a lot of those battles only enhanced my faith. Uh, I remember uh, a friend of ours, Dr. Hester in Nashville, a neurologist, came by the night that I was uh, getting ready to have uh, bypass surgery. Uh, and he came in the room and trying to cheer me up, I guess. He said, you're going to have a zipper. I said, a zipper? He said, yeah, right down the middle of your chest. So, uh, but you know what? I got through that uh, with the help of God, with the help of my family, with the help of my church family. Uh, the next thing I did was I had a brain bleed I was in Skyline for two months, and I know some of you may think I'm nuts anyway, but I was nutty in a fruitcake for two months. I knew nothing, didn't know anybody, didn't, don't remember anybody that came by the hospital, didn't remember any of that. But through that process, I had a great friend uh, and said had is the correct word, uh, John Hazel. And uh, John was Kevin Hammer's basketball coach in college, and he held meetings at our building. And John came by the hospital several days. And one of the things he would say to Janet was, he'd say, what do we need to pray for today? And he was a great believer in specific prayers, saying exactly what you are uh, thankful for and what you're asking God to do. And that's important. I think that lets God know that you're serious about what you're talking about. And I do think you need to be uh, specific about that. And my two months at there was a complete blank. And then <clears throat> Janet and I contacted the virus uh, uh, and uh, we we're in the hospital for a week. We're quarantined for 21 days. But you know what came out of that was that for 21 days, my brothers and sisters here at church brought a hot meal every day. In fact, when we got to about the end of the game, I told Janet, I said, let's tell them we're still not feeling very well <laughs> so that we can keep the food coming because it was good. 
and uh, and and you know, and to have your brothers and sisters come by and say, "Brother, we're praying for you. We we hope things work out." You know, that's a great comfort, and we can be a great support to each other. In fact, that's one of the things I think that we are uh, uh, commanded to be. I remember when I left Skyline, I remember that I had a post uh, visit in about three weeks. And I'll assure you for seven weeks, I, d I knew nothing. And I acted even more ignorant than I ordinarily do. Uh, because I, I just absolutely, I actually thought that the doctors were holding me hostage. Uh, and I attempted to break out. In fact, I threw a, tried to throw a chair through a window and, uh, and uh, to draw attention because I thought I was being held captive. Uh, so, uh, and obviously, uh, my family was nice to me during that period of time. They didn't tell me uh, they thought I was crazy, which they actually did. Uh, but, uh, but they were always there to support I remember going back to the doctor, and the doctor said, uh, when I went back for the post visit, he looked at me, and, and uh, in fact, I, I didn't remember his face, and he said, you are not supposed to be here. And in fact, when I left the hospital going to Skyline, he, the, he told Janet that I would not make it, and the doctors in Skyline told me I wouldn't make it. Uh, but he told me that night, he said, uh, evidently God's got some other plans for you. Uh, and, and so, you know, that, and I thank God for that. I thank God for my family. Uh, I thank God that we can always call on him. It's such a comfort that when we go through the problems of life, that we can always lift our eyes toward heaven and pray to God to help us and know he's there. As it says in Psalms 46, be still and seek him out. And that's, that's the ideal for us to seek God out. And I, I would end by saying, uh, as I have aged, my body has gotten weaker, but my faith has gotten stronger and my prayer life has gotten stronger. In fact, uh, I know some of you sometimes, if you like me, I used to say my prayers when I went to bed. Well, I found out as I got a little older that all of a sudden I was going to sleep and I didn't remember praying. So I have a thing that every night before I go to bed, I sit in my chair and I say my prayers. And I, have, I pray for a lot of different people and a lot of different things. In fact, it seems like my prayers get longer all the time. But anyway, that's just between me and God. But I, I appreciate everything that God has done for me and my family. I appreciate everything that God has done for this church. I'm thankful for our ministers. I'm thankful for their families. I'm thankful for our elders and their families, for the deacons and their families, for our teachers. And I pray that every day that God will bless us and that we'll strive to be more Christ-like. Good morning. This is extremely out of my comfort zone, as many of you know. But um, when Steve asked me to talk about things that I was thankful for, I guess I couldn't pass that up. I also was tough to narrow that list down, those things that are most important. I guess my first thing that I, when I think about is my parents. I'm thankful for my parents. You know, <laughs> I joke sometimes you can't pick your parents. And um, my, my dad always finds that funny and he says that too. But, um, you know, had I picked my parents, I probably would have made a really stupid choice. 
I probably would pick somebody like Marlon Brando or Horson Wells as a father, and boy, that would have turned out just epically pitiful, I'm sure. But it's a good thing that God picks your parents for you. You know, having parents with faith and grandparents with faith, that's, that's something you just you just don't necessarily appreciate until a little bit later. You know, my parents took us to church. We went, um, we went Sunday mornings and all those things. We were always there. But really, I, looking back, I fig figured out that's really only the tip of the iceberg. When you start looking at, at the people and you look at church, and what my parents did, that, that, and I'm not trying to belittle a, the corporate Sunday morning worship service, but there's a whole lot more to what goes on at church or with the body than what happens Sunday morning. I guess I was really fortunate, I know I was, that I had you know, a father growing up that was a deacon in that church in Owensboro. I even had a, my grandfather's brother, Hayward Warren, was an elder there. And I, I got the opportunity to look up to those men. You know, my dad did some kind of odd things, I guess, and looking back, whenever he went to men's business meetings and stuff, he took me. And I was told just to sit there and keep my mouth shut, and that's what I did. But you know what, I learned a lot going to those men's business meetings, sitting over there in the corner, keeping my mouth shut. I learned that there was a lot of business that was going on in the church that I, that really most people weren't afforded if they only came on Sunday mornings. I know that whenever something had to be done, you know, fixing things at that time just wasn't outsourced a whole lot. It seemed like the men of the church and the women of the church just got together and did things that needed to be done, you know. Something needed to be cleaned in the building, they just got together and cleaned in the building. My parents drug me along to those things. I remember putting speakers up. The, the building in Owensboro is all crazy tall. I don't know who designed that thing. It was a popular design at the time, but anyway, putting up speakers, helping my dad wire speakers for the PA system, I, that was wild. I also remember, you know, going and fixing air conditioning systems and changing out capacitors on motors that had failed and I don't know what day of the week it was that we did it, it couldn't have been on a Saturday, but at one point we all got together with a bunch of what seemed like really old men, they were probably my age, um, sealed the parking lot. You know, we don't do that stuff ourselves now typically anymore. Mowing the, mowing the lawn, you know, all those type of things. Just whatever had to be done at the church, my parents drug me to it and made sure that it happened. And I got to see a lot of that kind of behind the scenes thing. And I, I just, that's just kind of some things I really are thankful for. You know, my, my parents had a business and my mother ran it. It was a, a video store and I worked for my mother at that video store, she was a manager. And uh, you know, I have a business now and a lot of the things I learned managerial wise were from her. You can ask the guys that work for me, I probably don't do all those things all the time that she did, but, but at least I learned them. There's some even neat things that my kids probably don't even know that happened. You know, after I graduated high school, I decided to go to college, and I started off at the Orangeburg Community College, and at that time, it was part of the UK system, and my mother hadn't had the opportunity to go to college after she graduated, and I, I said, well, why don't you go to college with me? Um, we took a class together. It was New Testament literature. That was kind of fun. She did. She went to college with me. And... Um, I bet her grades were probably better than mine, but looking back on it, she ended up with a degree out of that. You know, I'm, 
obviously thankful for for Tanya. You, you just you can't do any better than having a Christian spouse. I mean, that's just a, so important. It makes your life so much easier. When we were in, when we got engaged, this is probably something my kids don't know either, but we decided that our parents needed to meet. You know, my parents were living in Owensboro. Her parents were living in Bowling Green. And so we invited them all to go out to eat. What a crazy dinner that was. Before, before dinner was over, they were already planning trips to go together. And they took those trips. Obviously, that's how well they got along. You just never know how things like that are going to turn out. But they got along so well that they... They planned these trips that they did, and boy, what a blessing that was. Matter of fact, um, Tanya and I got to ask them to go to a trip. All, all the grandparents went with us. We went camping. Not the other type of camping I like in a tent or on the ground, but the type that Tanya more likes in a camper. And uh, we went to Chattanooga this last fall, and or this fall for fall break, and both sets of grandparents went with us. I don't know very many families that travel with both sets of parents to do things. That's, that's a blessing. You know, it was, it worked out extremely well that right after Tanya and I were married that Don and Renee were both able to retire. He from General Motors and her from Bowling Green Bank and Trust or BB&T or whatever it was at the time. And they were able to move down here from Bowling Green to Franklin. It's not very far, but I tell you what, it's really close now. And that's, that's a blessing. It's pretty neat. You, you don't know, what, like I said, what you're going to get with in-laws, but mine are good enough that my mother-in-law, some of you may not even realize, worked for me for several years in a business I used to have part ownership down in Tennessee. She was, um, she did accounts receivable. I tell you what, nobody had better skills in taking care of accounts receivable. Of course, I guess she had interest in making sure people paid us. She would get, she would get people to agree to things and make sure that they paid us. And uh, anyway, they would just be embarrassed not to if after they promised her something. You know. Had it not been for my father's health, I don't know that my parents would have had the opportunity to move down here when they did. Um, being close to Vanderbilt and with his heart issues and, and all that. Quite frankly, it was a blessing that he was able to, they were able to move here. Um, you know, you look over here, I, I don't know of very many families that both sets of grandparents sit with your kids. I didn't pick out where they sat today, but you know, one of my boys is sitting with one set and the other one's sitting with my dad. My mother's not feeling well today, but that's that's a that's a blessing that I just would never fa never fathom that I would ever have is um, two sets of parents there that that would be able to show my kids how important it is to be a Christian. You know, I'm also blessed, blessed by work. I've got a very, very small business in Bowling Green, and there are only five of us, each Christian. And at the beginning of all this, COVID craziness, a, a good portion of what we do has to deal with state highways. And I, I knew looking into it, it, it wasn't anything miraculous, but I knew that it was going to turn out to be pretty bad this year because if people aren't going to be going out and doing things, they're not going to be buying a lot of fuel and there's not going to be a lot of road tax and things are going to Things are going to get pretty meager in that part. And that was 
that was a good portion of the business that we that we had. So I I sat down with those guys and told them what I thought. You know, I said this is possibly going to be a pretty poor year. Each of them stepped up and made sure that you know those customers that we had been with or we we went with them. So I don't know how else to explain it except that. The guys made sure that the work they did was was top notch, and that wherever our customers ended up having to go to to find their work, we went with them. You know, we've done work in Michigan and South Carolina and all kinds of places that we normally wouldn't be doing work. But I don't know that the bottom line will be quite as good as it normally would be, but I tell you what, we're all eating. That's pretty good. But during that time, I also had one guy, Mark McGee, some of you know, live, lives in this community. He was out for over two months. Mark didn't know it until afterwards how close he came to dying. I mean, he really did. He nearly died with, with his condition. He had some crazy form of strep throat, and they I guess did four or five surgeries to cut out things and it was it was wild. But you know, that's twenty percent of my workforce that was gone in a time that things were pretty tough, but all the guys they stepped up and and took care of that just without even without even missing a beat. So I don't know. I, I think all those things are things that God has blessed me in and I I just there's so many more things but I can't help but believe that you know obviously he picked my parents he he helped pick the spouse and helped me picking the guys I work with and all those things and my life wouldn't be as quite frankly as easy as it is now had, had he not done that so those are a few of the things I'm thankful At the beginning of the month of November, looking forward to Thanksgiving, I really wanted to challenge our youth to adopt a, an attitude of gratitude, is kind of what we called it. So uh, we spent, we've spent the past three Wednesday nights at, with lessons about gratitude, um, talking about thankfulness and things that we're thankful for. Because standing here today, I think we can all agree that we just don't say thank you enough, right? So each week, um, I challenge the kids to write a letter, um, a note, um, um, a thanks letter to someone in their life. Um, each week it was geared toward maybe someone different. So we've written notes to parents. We've written notes to some of our friends and to some of the members here in the congregation. And some of you guys were recipients of those cards. And if you were, I apologize because I didn't get to proofread each one of them. So. I hope, but I hope you enjoyed um, your card. This past week, I challenged them to think of a church member, um, someone that has made an impact on their life, or maybe someone that, that serves the church and just doesn't get told um, thank you enough. As we brainstormed names, who we might write to, who would be a good, uh, deserving recipient of our thanks, here in the congregation, it was very clear to me that our teens, they really love this church. And that they're thankful for those here this morning who set strong examples that, that lead in worship and that teach their classes growing up. They're thankful for adults who choose to invest in their lives. And they're thankful for adults that communicate with them about their interests. Adults that serve the community, that run businesses that are successful. And they have so many great leaders here in the congregation at Franklin. I'm here to tell you this morning that they're following your example. Our teens are doing some really great things, and we as a congregation need to let them know that likewise, 
Uh, we're thankful for them. In just the past year, our teens, teens have excelled in ball fields, in their classrooms, at their schools, and in their communities. Uh, we have some kids involved in some really great things. And I would just encourage you this morning to, to talk to them about them, to ask about them, to share their interests. You know, I don't want to name names for fear that I would forget someone, but just off the top of my, my head, you know, some of our kids have, they've won softball championships, they've made basketball teams, they've served in scouts, they've played in bands. Um, some of them have athletic talents. Um, they excel in school. Others uh, are just goofballs, right? And they have this uncanny way to make you laugh or to really just brighten your day. And I'm, I'm thankful for each and every one of them. Just this past month, we spent some time at camp around um, a few of their peers from different communities and different churches. And we had some teens absolutely step up out of their comfort zone to lead songs, uh, to say prayers. We had two girls step up and they were able to craft this really awesome cross out of broken glass. So for uh, sake of a lesson, this glass had been broken and they were able to put it back together in this really beautiful cross and that's on display in our warehouse across the street. But they're just so talented. And I make mention of all of that just, just to say this, that while our teens are super talented, they also are going through a tough time, just like the rest of us. And they need your support today. Um, their schools have been closed. Their friends are quarantined. Programs are canceled. There's no karate class. There's no basketball practice, right? And they are having a hard time with it. Um, so I'm asking you to, to support our teens this morning. Let it be known that the Franklin Church of Christ is thankful for the bright future that it has. That we're thankful for those that do spend time in the AV room. Right? or just picking up cups, or just in service um, in the community. We're thankful for the bright future that we have, and we're also thankful for what they're doing. This morning, today, I, I want to stand and say thank you for the teens, right? and also thank you to this congregation. You guys have provided me with a platform that I'm extremely thankful for, and the opportunity to serve your families and its youth, and I'm so thankful. Uh, I would ask that you continue to support me with your prayers, pray for our teens, and um, we'll continue with Curtis. I just want to say, wow. I'm supposed to wrap that up in a little bit box. Don't forget my slide next, Eli. We're helping in the control room. How do you wrap that all up? Well, I didn't really prepare anything because I really didn't know what to say. Because I was supposed to kind of wrap this all up in a little box. And I appreciate the words that Steve, Frank, Brian, and Eli have given. And as I sat back there and kind of watched and listened to everything that they were saying, they covered everything that's on these five pumpkins on the screen. We've covered health, we've covered home, we've covered family, we've covered friends, and maybe I even got food there, we, we've covered that a little bit. There's so many things that we can be thankful for during this season. I'm thankful that the elders have, it's been a hard job since March. Uh, if you haven't known, through all this, we've had task force, and most of the task force has been the elders and, and the ministers and a select few of us here in the building and a couple of the doctors we've been talking to. And There's been hard decisions that we've had to make and go through the ups and downs. It's hard to minister during this time. When you go to one of our little old ladies' doorstep because she wants to give, I'm thankful that she still wants to give. And I go and reach my hand around the corner to get her check and bring it back to church. But she's in her home and she can't come out. I'm thankful for people that I've been able to maybe help benevolence-wise take to a hotel, take them food when they need it, or give them the help they need. 
I'm just thankful for everything that we've continued to do here at our church, even through this crazy time. And it seems like it's never going to end. It's, but they keep saying there's hope around the corner. Well, we've always had hope. Our thankfulness ought to be in Christ. Our thankfulness ought to be in God. Our thankfulness ought to be in what Christ did for us upon Calvary's cross. And I think that kind of wraps up everything that these four men have said today and what you can say from your homes this week. You know, usually around Christmas time, the world thinks about Jesus Christ's birth. And a lot of times this week, this is about the only time a lot of people think about their Thanksgiving. It's sad sometimes that we can't do that 24-7, 365 or 366, whatever, if it's a leap year, days of the week. That we just need to continue to be thankful for everything that we have because God has blessed us and Jesus Christ died upon Calvary's cross. I want to reflect on one scripture passage. Colossians 3, starting in verse 12. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Eli, you can go ahead. We're going to sing this song as a song of encouragement because we do have victory in Jesus each day of our lives, and we ought to be thankful for that. Let us stand. And sing.
Just a couple of announcements I want to point out. Uh, just letting you know, we are open business as usual to the best of our ability. Um, we might have to change up a few of our um, times in the office, Steve, myself, and Eli, and Don um, in, the, in their main church office. If you can't get a hold of us, you have our cell phones, you have our emails. Just call and leave us a message here. We're checking those. We're just trying to be safe during this crazy time. And we will let you know, as Steve's mentioned, we're going ahead as planned through December 30th. If something does come about major, we will let you know as soon as possible on uh, Facebook, uh, via email, and um, also via uh, text messages or one call. Just a couple updates. <clears throat> as Steve mentioned, we will not have services this Wednesday night, and when the church office will be closed Thursday and Friday, but if you need me, I'll take away from the turkey and I'll come help you, or Steve will. We're, we're here all the time, but we will not be in the office Thursday and Friday. Just a couple additions to the prayer list. Um, Scotty Cook wanted us to remember Miss Mary Farley. This is the wife of Steve Farley over here at Sims County Tire where Scotty works. Uh, she was rushed to St. Thomas last night uh, with some problems. Um, they have her down there with some tests and uh, we're not aware of anything right at the moment. Miss Angela Vaughn's out in the uh, foyer for their angel tree and there's some big ticket items and she has all those out there. We have 20 children we're going to be helping this year. If you do not know with the angel tree and you might be seeing something else on Facebook about uh, another uh, thing going on in town, we get our names from the school system. The school system gives us 20 specific names uh, that go on, I think it's the ELF connection, same kind of thing, but we get 20 kids from the school system, so that's who we're helping. Uh, please return unwrapped by December 13th or sooner. We have to get them to the school system later that week. If you do not have time to shop, there's a basket also at the Welcome Center along with the box for typhoon relief that you can make monetary donations. And as Steve mentioned, we're helping families this afternoon. Most of them's coming here to uh, pick up the food, but we do have a couple boxes that we have to deliver for families that could not get out. Does anyone else have anything else? Good to see everyone here. Everyone have a great Thanksgiving week uh, uh, with family, friends, uh, whether you're doing it safely, virtually, however it is, uh, just be safe this week. We look forward to seeing you back at Bible classes next Sunday morning at 9.30, worship at 10.30. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you again for today. We thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for our family and friends uh, and those that have been joining us on Facebook. We uh, ask and pray that you be watching over them and mindful of them. Dear Father, we just um, are so thankful for everything that we have and want to thank you for the uh, four men this morning besides myself that spoke about the things in their lives, the things in all of our lives that we can be thankful for each and every day. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for those uh, on our prayer list. We continue to pray for the Holman family and their loss. Um, be with uh, Nick Chandler and his family today as they uh, lay to rest, a great uncle of his. And uh, dear Heavenly Father, be with Miss Farley, uh, be with Steve during this time, and be with their co -work their coworkers and workers over there at Simpson County Tire. And, uh, trying to understand what's going on now and hopefully she'll get the comfort and the answers that she needs from the doctors and nurses down there. And dear Father, uh, help all of us be smart and uh, courteous during this time. Be uh, mindful of this pandemic that's going around. We don't know where it's at and just let us be safe. Be, uh, we're mindful of those that we know in our church family, in our uh, community, uh, our friends and neighbors that are going through the struggles and um and going through uh, this illness and we pray for all those that are quarantined or or just uh, struggling and um, don't know really what to do but dear father just let them have a faith and and trust in you but also let us uh, have a um, a common sense and a acknowledgement of what we need to do to keep ourselves safe and, and be patient and understanding of those around us and mindful of um of the words of the Philippian writer to uh, not be of interest, uh, just help us be of interest of others and to do what we can to bless one another and also to bless you and your son. Thank you again for this worship service today. Let us all be safe on our way home and be mindful of uh, our Thanksgiving this week. In Jesus' name we pray.